What's going on, guys? Rich Schneider right here. I'm joined by Jonathan Hilleman, former Rutgers running back, NFL back. John, what's going on? What's going on, man? What's going on? What's going on? Just nothing. Just chilling, grinding. You know how it goes. Yeah, so, so what are you up to now? I know uh, you had a little stint with the Giants last year, I believe. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this current current free agent uh, did, did a, quite a few workouts, just, uh, you know, staying in shape, you know, doing music, doing photography, kind of, you know, keeping busy. There you go. So I know you've been uh, one of the more vocal former players on Twitter about this uh, 2020 Rutgers team. What, what are your thoughts on this season and uh, Shiano's first, uh, I guess, Shiano's second time around? Yeah, uh, so... I mean, I, w- I was very, I would say I was very proud of the effort that was shown by the players, um, you know, the older players, younger players, the transfers and everything. I kind of knew that, you know, Coach Shiano coming back was going to bring, you know, that attitude, that blue collar mentality, the toughness. That's kind of what I saw from the players. I mean, I never, and it, they weren't, it didn't, never seemed like they were out of any game. I mean, besides the Ohio State game, but even in that game, you know, they fought, you know what I'm saying? They fought definitely like a, a different team in the second half. Um, but every game they were, they were in just about every game that they played, you know, a couple, you know, bad breaks here, the ball bounced a, a, a wrong way, you know, somebody stepped right when they're supposed to step left and, you know, some things happen. But, um, you know, in the games that they won, all being on the road, um, and just, you know, fighting back from being down or having to, you know, keep a lead or things go to overtime and go win the game. Uh, they, they show. So I was definitely proud of the effort that I saw. Obviously, you know, being, you know, an alum, you want to win, you know, all the games you can. But, um, but yeah, definitely, I was definitely proud of what, you know, what I saw. And I'm very excited to see what happens next. I kind of have a feeling on what will happen next. Usually when you have one, a new regime and you come in and you, you know, the first year you want to see how it goes by the second year, everybody's kind of more, you know, accustomed to how things are going to go. They're a little more bought in now. If they were kind of on the fence before, they're a little more bought in. And also recruits take notice, you know what I'm saying, which is big. Recruits take notice and, you know, they're already starting to take notice in the state of New Jersey. And as soon as you get, you know, those players from, from out of state, and uh, it, it should be it should be good again. It should be special. It should be special again. I'm excited. Yeah. So I know you just mentioned recruiting. Obviously, as a recruit, you were a Rutgers commit at one point. You uh, ended up flipping to Boston College. I think late December, mid December, whatever it was. What well, could take us through that process and what what kind of happened there? Uh, I feel like I told the story a thousand times. I know. <laughs> but Sorry, uh, yeah, it but no, nah, it, it's it's rightfully so. Uh, but yeah, so. I mean, when I committed, when I first committed there, uh, it was kind of just like, it felt like a no brainer. We had just about every, every top guy in the state of New Jersey was committed to Rutgers. I mean, we had everybody, we had some kids from other places as well, um, Texas and Florida, but we had every, just about every top position in the state of New Jersey in that twenty. 14, you know, senior high school class. Um, so, yeah, it seemed like a no-brainer. I came in um, and, you know, the, the season went on and I kind of committed, but I was locked into my season. You know, I wasn't really thinking about college. I wasn't really, you know, talking to any teams. I was, I was 100, 110% sold. Yeah. So as the year went on, things start to happen controversies I think the off the offensive coordinator left midway through the season which is, was kind of weird um yeah that was that was extremely weird because <laughs> uh, I I mean I, I've been watching college football for a long time I, I think I don't think I ever saw that but um he left and then but I, I knew the offensive coordinator that they you know appointed into that spot when that person left I, I knew them still so it wasn't like but it still was kind of a little shaky as to why um I think the defensive coordinator at the time got in trouble for bullying, was in trouble for bullying at the time. Yeah. You know, then you had the basketball situation. So the athletic director is like got fired. It, so it was just a tornado at the time. And I just noticed that guys are starting to leave, you know, guys are starting to open up their recruiting. And I think I, I heard that um, players, the coaching staff at the time was saying, well, it's either you're committed to us or we're going to take your scholarship away. They're saying things along the lines of that. So I think a lot of that pissed a lot of players off. And so guys ended up, you know, leaving. 
So I I stayed, I think I was one of one of the last guys to leave. I stayed. Um, I went down there because I it wasn't like I had to fly out and take a trip. You know, I was I'm from Plainfield, so the records was 12 minutes or 15 minutes away. So I said, you know what, we me and my dad and my uncle, we just said, you know, we're just gonna take a trip on like a Friday. And I just called coach. I said, yeah, because, you know, I come in and talk and, you know, go over what's going on. And he said, yeah, no problem. So we went, we went to go talk to him. And it just didn't seem like I was getting – it seemed like there's like a tornado behind you, explosion behind you, but you're saying everything's okay. Go, yeah. You'll be fine. Everything – they weren't giving me the exact real what's going on. And so um, I actually got – which this person shall remain nameless. I actually got, he was a, uh, one of the head recruiting coordinator at that time. He was a prep grad. So he graduated the high school. That I went to um, about 10 years before I did it. And he worked at Rutgers and he was just like, and he told me the truth. He said, yo man, if you were my younger brother, I, I look at you as a younger brother. You know what I'm saying? If you were my blood brother, I tell you right now, probably open your recruiting right now. It's not I, in the next few years. It's not going to be good. So he kind of called the decline. He kind of saw something that I didn't. Uh, I guess he just knew what was going on in the locker room and coached. I, I, I didn't know. Maybe he, he had a better inside scoop than I did, obviously. But um, so he kind of told me, yo, man, I think you should open up your recruiting, bro. I, I don't know. If, and, and come back to Rutgers again um, on your official. Make Let us be your last trip. You know, once you see other places, come back and let us be your last trip. And, you know, if you if you still feel like, nah, I want to stay home, then, yeah, make that decision. If not, then go to the school that you feel the most comfortable. And so that's kind of how, you know, I took my trips uh, to, you know, I took my trips to uh, Penn State, uh, Michigan State, and went to Boston College on my third trip and ended up committing. So so now Boston College, it was, it was Ryan Day that recruited you, right? Uh, Ryan Day, Al Washington, yeah. Yeah, so I guess you're rooting for them in the uh, the playoffs this week or next week, whatever it is. Uh, yeah, I mean, for Coach Day's sake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what? So what made you want to come back? Uh, I just, I mean, after I graduated, uh, I was I was leaning towards going to the NFL after my senior year, uh, after my retro junior year, but I, I felt like so, me personally, everybody was kind of in my corner telling me a bunch of different things. I mean, I I, I heard. Stocks was good, some stock was bad, this and that. And man, you should go to school. And people say, nah, man, you should, you know, you should just go and leave now. So I was kind of have mixed signals about it. I, I think it took me almost I, almost a week before I had to make an actual decision. Um, yeah. I sat back and I just said, I felt like there was just certain things that I, I had to improve mentally uh before I can really take that jump I felt like I just wasn't ready mentally yet um the season didn't go the way I I wanted it to go personally um so that frustrated me a lot and I just felt like in my mind I just wasn't ready to like attack the most important time of my life you know what I'm saying I just felt like I needed another year just to like help my stock solidify myself you know get you know back into that whole idea again and um, yeah, so that's that's kind of why I said, but and I and I was getting, you know, I so I kind of shot myself out a little bit. It, it wasn't really that tough. A lot of I had a lot of a lot of different people, like seven different schools were interested. But I just I knew I wanted to come home. Once I knew Rutgers was interested, I knew I wanted to come back home. I just missed being home. I, I've always, because even at BC, I, I've always rocked the Rutgers games. I was always a Rutgers fan. I had, you know, some of my best friends and even high school teammates who played at Rutgers. And so um, I've always followed them. Every time I came home, I was at Rutgers. So it was like I was a student there anyway. Yeah. But um, so I was just like, you know, that, I, that would be cool. You know what I'm saying? To be able to come home and, you know, have the opportunity to come back and kind of play there. And, you know, that was always something I wanted to do as a kid. So I was able to do it. So I was pretty, pretty thankful for that. So uh, I know you only played one season for Rutgers technically, but any crazy experiences? Uh, I know it was probably not the best year for the team overall, but any any cool stories, anything like that? Um, crazy experiences. Um, not really. Like like you said, it wasn't really the best year, I would say. But I would say, um, 
I mean, the Penn State game was fun. Uh, that was a fun game. From the Northwestern game was a fun game, even though I didn't play it. Um, I mean, it was, it was, it was weird because it was like a lot of times it was. It felt kind of similar to this year. Like you were, we were in a lot of games, but we only got like kind of blown out. Obviously, Ohio State, Michigan. Yeah. Um, I played Michigan game, and then you know, but for a lot of those games, we're in a lot of those games, like one possession or ten points or yeah. certain type of things. So it was a lot of those games where we're kind of playing from behind. So like we're just like mapping things out and trying to call any play. I think that was really the the craziest experience is just being on the sideline, just like coach asking, "Oh, what do you think? What do you think we should run?" Like I was like, "All right, let's run this," and then what would work and stuff like that. So I would. I would say it was that. I mean, you, people would laugh about it when I tell them, but it it was fun. I mean, I mean, that was kind of you know, obviously it would have been fun to kind of like and, and kind of come back home with wins. But I mean, just like yeah. we had to kind of figure things out and go on the road, and it's a young team and they're trying to figure things. You looking at younger players and they're kind of have that look in their eye where they're like, man, this is kind of tough. You know what I'm saying? The older players kind of yeah. look unfazed because we're kind of like, yeah, I mean, we kind of told you it was gonna be like this. So I mean. Yeah, that, I mean, I guess all of that, the whole experience, and just kind of seeing, like, being around the, the younger players and all the time they're asking me about, like, the difference between Boston College and how you were able to, you know, do so well and go through certain things and deal with injury and deal with coaching change and things like that. And, you know what I'm saying, just, you know, kind of, you know, expressing any type of advice and wisdom to them, you know, because it was a tough season, I mean, even for older players. So I can only experience – I can only imagine how it would be if a younger player, if I was a freshman, had to deal with that you know you've got other schools that you recruited you that may have been doing better and you're thinking man you know, I, what if I would have went there you know what I'm saying what if I would have went there you know I turned them down to be here you know so yeah in your mind all your mind's playing tricks on you and stuff like that but um I wouldn't say any crazy experiences but just you know overall pretty cool experiences to just be able to come back and you know be a, a, a you know an elder statesman and help the guys out the best way I can and seeing how they've grown over the years is, is pretty cool. Yeah, so speaking of one of those guys, obviously, in your running back room, Pacheco, what 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 stands out about him? How, what is he like uh, on the field, off the field? I, we obviously know he's a pretty heck of a player. Yeah. Pop is – I'm I, I, out of all the players, I would say I'm proud, most proud of him. Not just because he's a running back, but because of how much he's matured. Um, he's grown up a lot, he, a whole lot. I mean, the kid at one point – <laughs> he was just all over the place. I, that's, the, that's the best way to say it. But he, um, he's. I think he's understanding now. And sometimes that just comes with age. I mean, I was the same way coming into college. Uh, just you just think that you got all the time in the world, and you want to. You kind of like ah, I want to be the man on campus, and this and that, and you're making plays, and you want to be, you know, around. As you get older, you kind of want to fade the black a little more and kind of focus on what you got going on because you got you your time is running out. So I think he's kind of gotten into that area of his of his life and his and his maturation. I I've talked to Pop a few times this year on the phone. And um I he just his maturity, you know what I'm saying? He's a, he's a team player. Um a lot of times in the past if things weren't going well as far as um you know, football or as far as, you know, maybe I you got the ball this many times this week, next week you ain't getting the bill. You might be doing yeah. well this week, next week. His how he approaches it and handles it is a lot different. And I, I think that that is um that is something I'm very proud of. Um, you know what I'm saying? That's that's something that, you know, sticks out to me. Cause obviously he's got ability. Yeah, we all know that. I mean he wouldn't be starting in the Big Ten. Um, wouldn't be a division one player if he didn't have ability. And so the fact that he's able to mix that with, um, you know, off, off the field maturity and, you know, success in the classroom, that's, that's definitely something that uh, I'm proud about for him. And, you know, so yeah, Pop, and Pop's just a fun loving kid, funny. One of the funniest kids I know, just always high energy kid. He, even when I'm kind of, we used to be like, man, I'm tired of me, leave me alone. He's, hype getting people hyped up and things like that so he used to his energy is very infectious and um you know guys really feed off of him so he's one of those type of guys that he, and he loves the game of football he loves football you can put him anywhere he'll make a play you know what i'm saying he just he's just a football player man and he, he loves the game and he's old school and he's you know he's a tough kid tough south jersey kid so 
Yeah, Pop is one of the Pop is always going to be one of my favorites. So, so I know we talked about it a little bit before. You were in the NFL. Does he have that NFL potential? Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. I feel like Pop definitely has it. He, I hope he's not listening to this. Um, <laughs> I think Pop definitely has that NFL potential. He's got the speed. He runs hard. He got great vision. He got great explosion. He catches the ball. He, he's not afraid to put his nose in there on pass protection. I mean, he's played, he's had history at, at uh, Rutgers playing special teams, so he could definitely mm-hmm. do that, uh, which is going to help. I think, yeah, Pop definitely has it. He's, he just can't, if I'm him, I'm just not focused on it. I'm just focused on coming back next year and making sure that that season that your film is NFL-like, you know what I'm saying? Like, when NFL scouts yeah. can look and say, okay, he looks like an NFL back. Announcers, other coaches, your coaches, you know, saying that yeah, this kid looks like an NFL player. Like he's he's ready, he's mature, he's 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 added a notch in his belt every year, and that is something that he's got to work on and just continue to you know work on his attitude. I mean, it's gotten a lot better from when it was his freshman year. Just continue to work on it. Continue for people to have great things to say about him, and he should be fine. Yeah. So now sticking with that offense a little bit, I know I think you had a couple offensive coordinators at Boston College. You had a different one at Rutgers. I know you said the one left midway through. Uh, during your recruitment and all that. What, what do you think about this offense this year? I know they got a little unique at times and probably a little too creative at times, but. Right. right. Um, so I thought about it. Um, I think I was being a little too critical in the beginning. My dad kind of saw a few of my tweets. My dad coached a long time. He was back in football and he, the whole side college. So he's been coaching, just coaching for over 35 years. And so he's been around a lot of different players, a lot of different from all ages, from college to high school to whatever, all ages. So he understands the idea of changing a program. So he kind of said, well, look, man, I mean, you, you got to understand it. Try to understand it through a coach's eye. When you're coming in, you're new. You're trying to figure out who's who, right? You get an idea of coaches tell you, okay, this is our best player. This is – one of our best players is our best line. It's our best receiver. But even then, you're like, okay, it's all lip service until you actually put the pads on and see who's who, right? Yeah. So I think that's ultimately what the, the the offensive staff tried to do is to figure out who can we trust, who is, is our guy. That Boston College used to call them foxhole guys. Who's our foxhole guys that when, when, the, when, the, when the war is at its toughest part, who can we depend on to, to, to help us – you know, get closer to victory or even achieve victory. So they, I, I think that the creativity really was all about trying to figure out who's who, what what guys can do, what guys can do in certain situations, what are they best at? Um, I, which is why the which is why we didn't see. Um, well, besides Bo, because Bo just made a lot of plays, yeah. but we didn't see a real substantial fill in anybody this year because every it was just by it was receiver by committee tight end by committee running back by committee quarterback by committee so it was kind of just like we're we're trying to figure out who can do what what's the best way for who what's the best way for us to win and who gives us that best chance I think ultimately that's what it was I had to retract a lot of my statements uh, that I had in the beginning because a lot of it because I was frustrated I'm not like one of the one of the, I'm not one of the like disgruntled dads who, you know what I'm saying, played high school football and they're like, why is my kid not playing? No, I'm, I'm oh, somebody you see it all who's time. played, yeah, who's played ball and is playing at every level. So I kind of understand and sit back and see like, why are we doing this? Why are we doing that? Why, why don't we, you know what I'm saying? So, so now I sit back and I understand and I, I'm trying to see it through, not so much as a player, but as a, as a coach, as somebody who is trying to move a program. Um, and I found out that he coached all the OC and the, he's young, you know what I'm saying? And so that, that kind of yeah. takes uh, something to it too. He's got to kind of learn himself, you know what I'm saying? He's got to kind of learn mm-hmm. what it takes to be great at certain levels, you know, or some older coaches, they know what to call in certain situations. They've been yeah. in a lot of the situations. They've lost games. They've won games. They've won championships. You know what I'm saying? They know what to do. They have that experience, you know what I'm saying? to just be like, okay. Call this, boom, call that. Okay, I know what to do. Okay, take this player, I'll put this player in. Okay, yell at this guy. Okay, tell this guy to, you know, got to pat him on the back here. Okay, they kind of know what to do in certain situations, right? And so 
that's ultimately what it was. We were all just trying to figure figure each other out. You know what I'm saying? We're trying to figure each other out and see what we have. And I think ultimately what we found is that we have a lot of versatility. We have a lot of guys who can make plays. We have a lot of guys who can do some things if given, you know, the substantial opportunity to get, you know, rhythm and continuity with each other. Yeah. So I know before the season started, Shan, well, I guess um, right when they announced the Big Ten was coming back, I know you see, you put out a tweet. I don't know if you remember this. You said that Rutgers is going to win the Big Ten in five years. You sticking to that or? Yeah. I, I, I say five to seven years, Rutgers – will be Rutgers can potentially win the Big Ten, I believe so. If they if they keep at the same trajectory they're on. Um because if you go back, um if you go back to when Shiano was at Rutgers, he came yeah. in 2003. What we 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 had the school record in wins, eleven wins in 2006. Yeah. Went from three wins to eleven in three years. So that I mean, now don't get me wrong; it wasn't the Big Ten, but the Big East no, wasn't. A, that that was Big a good East conference. The Big East wasn't a a, a walk around and you know no. just whatever cakewalk conference. You know, you had yeah. Louisville at their height, you had Cincinnati at their height, you had West Virginia who was was very good back then. Yeah. South Florida, South Florida. Yeah. you know, what I'm saying Connecticut in their heyday, so Syracuse. So you had teams, you know, what I'm saying, and, and Rutgers was the top dog at one point or scratching at that level every mm-hmm. single year that they were in that conference when Shiano was there. So he knows how to change a program. He knows how to get guys to buy in. He knows how to get guys and develop guys. The NFL guys that came out of that program yeah. um, is still in the league to this day. You know what I'm saying? So that just that speaks to the, the type of guy he is. It speaks to the type of program he's run over the years. It works. I mean, it's, I've heard stories from guys. It wasn't easy but it worked, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And so that was ultimately why I said what I said. When I said it, I had Rutgers people at first was like, oh, I don't know what you, I don't know about all that. <laughs> now you're starting to see the first one was like, whoa, they beat Michigan State on the road. Okay, you might have to, you might yeah. get some respect. They put up 27 against, against Ohio State. Okay, all right. So now people are starting to see it's there. You know what I'm saying? It's not like, it's not lip yeah. service. It's not just like, okay, it's just hopefully we can make it happen. No, it's 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 something there. They just have to get the right recruits in. They have to get the guys. They're going to get developed. They got to get the right recruits in. They got to get the right the guys to do, um, you know, they got to get the right guys in the right positions to make things happen. Um, one thing that I've always, I've always wanted to see, because if you think of any great program, at least for the offense, but ultimately for the whole team, is the quarterback. Yeah. I think I think it's time, and I said something about it. I think it's time for our you to find a young quarterback and stick with him, and like just develop him and be down with him for better or for worse. I think it's time for Rutgers to allow a kid to grow in the system and to you know take his lumps and develop and mature. I think I think in in the beginning it's going to be tough. I think in the beginning it's going to be kind of tough because obviously it's going to be mistakes made, but I think it will have enough playmakers around them and, and the older guys. But I think on the back end, it's going to be phenomenal because you have a mature, confident quarterback who's been through it, who knows what's on the other side of the smoke. Now it's just like, it's just about going and winning games and taking over games and really being a general back there that everybody not just the offense, but the whole program can say, that's our guy. I mean, we're going to live and die by him. And, you know, somebody that's going to say, well, through hell or high water, I'm going to, I'm going to make this happen. I think every team, every big time team that you have, that you see, you know what I'm saying? That's the point. Trevor Lawrence, you know, the, the quarterbacks at Bama, quarterbacks at Ohio state, you know, they, it's, that's just what it is. And so, I think that's ultimately something that's very important as well as we got to get caught. And it just builds continuity of receivers. I mean, guys who can just grow up together. You're not throwing, you know, you got to learn different receivers. And even as a running back, you can run in routes out the backfield. You got one quarterback who kind of puts more touch on it. So, you know, okay, you can, you kind of can get your eyes around a little late because he puts more touch on it. You got a quarterback that just throws it in, hammers it in there. So you got to get around <laughs> quick. You got to get your eyes up where your hands going to be like, or you might jam your fingers. You got to like, one's going to lead you a little more. One's going to throw a little behind. 
you got to kind of learn, you know what I'm saying? Where it's just, okay, we know exactly how he throws. You know exactly what yeah. he's on. He knows exactly when I break out of my route, he knows I want the ball right on me. When I break out my route, he, I know I'm kind of faster, so he knows to lead me. You know, like little things like that, little, little, little in, in, intricacies, sorry, in the game that, that are really, really important that don't show up on the stat sheet, but they will end up helping you towards the win column rather than the losing column. Yeah, so I know, I'm glad you mentioned the quarterback. I know they kind of – do you think Art Sikowski, he was there – his first year was your year at Rutgers. you think he was kind of just thrown to the wolves there a little bit too, like a young guy or I, – I do, I do. And it, 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 I and I love Art, I do. I genuinely love him. I think he's a great kid. He loves the game. He means well. He's, he's somebody that you – even when he was doing rough, you still want to root for him because he's a great kid. You know, I couldn't really be mad at him as a senior on that team. Now, it's frustrating and you're just like – you know what I'm saying? But at the same time, you just can't be mad at him because you're just like, you just weren't ready. You know what I'm saying? Like, I it personally, <clears throat> and a lot of my old teammates, we talk about it all the time. Like, man, if we would have done this, if we had Shiano, if, 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 if. if. But um, yeah. it's just like, um, he just wasn't ready. And, and, and people, you know, used to be like, oh, he's just not good. He's not talented. This and that. No, he's talented. He's very talented. And he looks the part. And he, and he, and he wants to, you know, and he, and he wants it. But he just wasn't truly ready. You can't, you know what I'm saying? It's very rare that a quarterback of any of any conference, really, but primarily the top three conferences, Big Ten, SEC, and the ACC. Oh, you're going to piss off some people that with that comment. Fresh, it's very rare that you throw a freshman quarterback in there, hand him the keys, and say, and, and he drives you to the promised land. It's very, okay. very rare. Unless he has all-American talent behind him in the running back, all American talent out wide, and he's got to have some monsters up front that can protect him. You know what I'm saying? But that wasn't the case for us. You know what I'm saying? We had we had talent in the backfield for sure. Um, out wide, not so much. We had a lot of young guys. We had you know Jerome, who was a very good tight end, but we didn't we didn't really. I mean, we had a pretty we had a pretty solid offensive line, but we didn't have enough talent around them, at least on the outside, to help them to make competitive and tough catches that even if the ball was wasn't thrown 100 percent correct those guys can still snatch it out of the air and make some things happen and give them that confidence we didn't have that so in that yeah. case you need an older quarterback to kind of get guys to be you know especially with a young group of receivers kind of okay guys don't worry about it you know what i'm saying yeah i got you next time no don't just just, just run your route keep playing hard guys kind of that can kind of keep guys going and understand what it's like. I mean, Gio's won games in the Big Ten. You know what I'm saying? Like he's he's done that. He's he's earned it. He was a captain. You know what I'm saying? Like, which is another thing. It's very rare that you don't allow this was, captain yeah. senior quarterback not to start. You know what I'm saying? So it so I just personally, but going back to what you said, I was personally personally, yeah, I agree with you. I think he just was thrown into the wolves a little too early. And it, it may have stunted his growth a little bit, but I think I'm just happy. I'm happy that he was able to make some things happen this year with the opportunities that he had and it kind of just allows and, and shows for his growth as well. I mean, I think he's a guy that could, is going to benefit from this season, not counting. I think he gets a, he, that extra year is ultimately going to help him because that it, it's, it's a year that he should have registered. He should, he should have, he should have had five years regardless. He should have registered. Yeah. He should have learned how to, to really operate and then what it takes to be a big time uh, quarterback in the big 10 conference. Cause it's, it's different than any other conference. So I, I want to go back to one thing you mentioned. You just said uh, you and a couple of the other guys that were on the team talked about what if we had Shiano. What, what, what's the what's the feeling like among a couple of you alumni? You guys wish you had that oh, one more man. year with him. I'll tell you one thing: if Shiano never left, if Shiano didn't leave in the beginning, I, I don't think anyone would have left. And I, I said it the other day. I don't think anybody anybody in our recruiting class would have left. I think it would have just been an explosion. <laughs> Like it would just been something just like E60, 30 for 30 worthy. It would just been like, like, whoa. Because when you have like the players that we had, like I, I was reading a thing of like, I think NJ.com, it's like 25 NFL players in that class. Yeah. Just Rutgers recruits, not, <laughs> not just Newton top 50 in New Jersey, just Rutgers recruits. 25 of us were from New Jersey. It was 31 of us in one class, which is the biggest class they had. And six of them guys were out of state. Twenty-five of them were from New Jersey. We didn't need to go out of state. The only guy we didn't have in that class was Jabril. And Jabril, because Jabril went to Michigan. 
And I think if everybody stayed, ultimately we would have, we would have made him crack on signing day. And then that would have just been that would have just been probably one of these most explosive things that anybody would have ever saw. Like I, you know what I'm saying? I'm not saying we would have been like the Miami 2001 Miami Hurricanes, but we would have been we would have been a very 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 good football team, a very respected football team. And I think we would have been fighting with Ohio State a few times. Junior and senior year, we would have been fighting with Ohio State. You know what I'm saying? It would have been games going down to the wire. So I mean. Personally, that's just 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 based off of the talent that is in the NFL right now, not just stuff of just yeah. high college and high school, but just proving guys in the NFL right now. And so, um, yeah, we talked about that. We talked. Some of us talk about that all the time. We like, you know, if Shiano was there, it just would have been different because it was. It would have just been. They were already good, really good at that time, but it just would have been to a next level of like. You know what I'm saying? Of college, it would have been just like a next level. I think we would have been ranked. Our junior and senior year would have been ranked very low. Um, like it would have just been would have been a very dangerous football team, a very dangerous sport. And I think it would have jump started how Rutgers football would have looked a lot different now. It would look totally a lot different now. I think if if that were to happen, but you know, it's just a if. <laughs> So, so I know he, he right now he's got three of the top 10 in 2021 from Jersey. What, what's it going to take to get back to that level where they're landing 20 plus guys from the state? Um, It's going to take a run, just like we had back th- at that time. I mean, when we first saw the run, when I first saw the run, it was 2005. They were really good. In 2006, they took it to another level, which kind of made me see because – my dad's view of Rutgers is different from my view of Rutgers. My dad, my uncle, because yeah. my dad's view of Rutgers, they used to see Syracuse coming to Rutgers and beat them eighty to zero. So they're like, "There's no way I want to come here." You know what I'm saying? So yeah, it was different then. Me, I'm looking at not there. I'm in the mosh pit because they rushed the field because they just beat the number three team in the country in, in Louisville. So I'm looking at them like, "Wait a minute, the Rutgers is good." You know what I'm saying? Like they're respected. And as I'm in high school. They're playing and then they're beating South Florida. They're beating Central Florida, and they're you know what I'm saying taking a piece of the big uh, the the Big East at the time, the conference. So I'm looking at them like this is their respected program, and I wouldn't, I would never, Rutgers would never take a back seat in my mind as far as you know going there at the time. Um, I just think that ultimately it's going to take another run. I think this year, I think now. It's going to be a little – it's not going to take as long because the, than it did the last time because the players now they know, you know, they're, whether those players might have been too young to see it, but their older brothers seeing it, their parents have seen it, their uncles have seen it, past players who maybe went to their schools have seen it and coming back and talking about it. So they know. They say, yo, that guy, Shiano, he knows what he's talking about. So those players like, hmm, okay. And like as a young kid in high school, I mean, you see a top player in the state of New Jersey going there, you're like, hmm. Usually you all know each other at some point in time. You know, you know each other from some camp or some something. Yeah. You hit them up on Twitter, yo, man, yo, what was your why? You, I see you committed to rugby, bro. I, I, how you feeling about that? I'm good, man. And then you got to start players recruit players. That's how I got recruited. I got recruited yeah. by those guys. I got recruited by – all of those guys, they were like, yo, man, stop playing around. Because my top at the time, dare I say it, was Ohio State. But, you know what I'm saying? And my guys like, bro, don't waste the time. Come here. We're going to beat Ohio State. And that's what kind of got me to say, all right, all right, join the wagon. You know what I'm saying? And so players recruit players. So I don't think it's going to take that long. I don't think it's going to take as long. I think it's just going to be one more, two more solid seasons. Two more solid seasons where you're going to bowl games and, you know, you win bowl games. Or you're just going to bowl games and you're showing you and you're being competitive in the conference. You're being competitive and it takes maybe you beating a top 10 team and rushing the field, you know what I'm saying, a couple times and doing that. I think that's really going to get the attention of those guys, those top guys in the state of New Jersey. Because New Jersey is a top six, top seven a football state in all of America. So when you got yeah. top guys in the state of New Jersey, they're going to be top guys in the country. And so – you know, being able to get those guys that level of talent is going to be very, very important because that's ultimately if you're taking those players away, you're taking those players away from your potential competitors, taking them away from Ohio State guys and Penn State. And you're taking them away from Michigan and Michigan State, because that's usually where 
a lot of Jersey guys go to Big Ten. They go to Big Ten schools or they go to ACC schools. I mean, very few of them go to SEC, but that just seems to be the the whole thing. Major guys just seem to go to Big Ten or ACC. So, I mean, if you're able to do that, you're able to take away from a lot of a lot of other teams you're going to be playing against on Saturday, which is going to be big. So now I got to ask you this one. This one's a little kind of a little more difficult. So obviously, Chris Ashstaff was kind of a lot of Midwest dudes. How hard is it to recruit New Jersey guys? Like, for example, Shiano hired a bunch of Jersey guys, with Jersey connections. Is it just easier that way? You think? Or yeah, did, did Chris I, Ashton I, kind I, of mess up with that. It's crazy. We must we must just be on the same page because that was I was talking to my dad about that a lot. Uh, he said that, that was going to be an issue um, when he because when I was at Boston College and they made this the you know the change, and we because we always had followed records. Um, like I said. So my dad would watch my games. He'd go not watch my games, but they would always follow and see what Rutgers was doing. And um, they knew that the change had can't had come. And he noticed that you know the coaching staff and thing they didn't hire. They weren't really bringing in Jersey guys, Jersey coaches. Yeah. So, and I said, well, then it's not going to work if you can't if because you don't speak the language. Like, don't get it right. Don't get me wrong. It's all English, <laughs> but no, I know you. I know it's you. Just, it's just different. Like a Jersey yeah. player, you to attract the Jersey player, Jersey player, you're going to, you got some dude coming in from, you know, parts unknown in Iowa talking about, yeah, come to Rutgers. I'm like, wait, what do you know about Rutgers? You know what I'm saying? Like, I know more about yeah. Rutgers than you do. You work there. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's, it's going to be tough to really relate to those type of players. So henceforth, you're going to get kids from Iowa. You're going to get kids from the, your backyard. Now, don't get me wrong, because that's Big Ten country. But if you want to keep that pipeline strong, you want to keep the talent in state, if you want to fence the garden, as they used to say, mm-hmm. um, you got to bring in coaches who under, and recruiting specialists and recruiting coordinators uh, that know, and even GAs that know what Rutgers is about, that know the area, that know, because like if you're you're in college you're not just gonna be on campus all the time you're gonna be around so they gotta yeah. know the spots like yeah go here for you get your hair cut go here to get you know food this place is this place treats Rutgers athletes really nice and go here to the shopping mall and go here to, uh, to if you want to hang out and have some free time during the week uh go here to do this and go here and th- you know what i'm saying uh, don't go here don't go here don't go here this is a rough fly don't go, you know what i'm saying so those things like being me being from Jersey, I knew all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? I knew where to go, where not to go. I didn't have to go too far away. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's just knowing the lay of the land. That's that's always important. It's just easy to relate to players. When you're able to relate to players, it, it builds that comfort. When you it's all about when you're making a decision and where you want to go for the next four years and if that, that will ultimately affect the next 40 years of your life, you want to be comfortable making that decision. You want to be comfortable in knowing that, man. Okay, I, I feel like a real family atmosphere. I feel like that, you know what I'm saying? I feel like this is the most comfortable that I'm going to feel in any other place that I've visited. So I want to come here. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's ultimately what it is. When you don't relate to the players and it's like, I don't really feel comfortable, like, doing it. I, there's nothing for us to really talk about. It's just football and football is not going all, all the way. Then is this person still going to, like, rock with me the same? You know what I'm saying? Like, all those yeah. things kind of go into a kid's mind when you're, when you're picking a school. You know what I'm saying? But it's mostly about comfortable. It's mostly about comfort, man. And, and, and you got to you gotta be able to relate. You got to be able to relate. So the last one I got for you, uh, what, what kind of relationship do you have with Shano? Do you, does he still talk? Do you talk to him at all? Or I know he never um, technically coached talk, you or anything I, like that. I, I talked to Shiano. I haven't talked to him lately. I haven't talked to him recently. Last time I talked to Shiano was when he was at Ohio State. Okay. Um, he was actually at our school. He he came to Ruck, he came to Boston College, um, and talked to us because Coach uh, Coach Dazio and Coach um, Coach Meyer were very good friends since their Florida days. Well, actually, far back, far back, they go farther back than that. So they've been really good. And Coach Yano came to talk to us, and he he shook my hand. He saw my name on the thing. He's like. I remember you. And I was just like, yeah, yeah, you recruit me at Rutgers. And we kind of had like a 10, 15 minute conversation. I was like, yeah. I want to say four years ago. But um, yeah, but I mean, he's, he's, I had to get back once the, hopefully the COVID kind of thing kind of shuts down so I can kind of go back in the, get in the weight room and work out and be around the guys and be around the coaches and stuff like that. Cause a lot of the coaches 
few of the coaches that were there when I was there are still there. A lot of the, you know, GAs and all of that. And some, there's still a good amount of players that were there when I was there. So, um, but yeah, I mean, Coach Yano, I mean, from, he's been the same since when I, when he recruited me. Tough guy, um, guy who really cares about his player, cares about his program. He's going to tell you the truth. You know what I'm saying? He told me the truth. He said, yo, man, I mean, I think you're really good. I think you're a really special player. Now, do I think you'll come in and start off your freshman year? That remains to be seen. But you'll get the opportunity to do so. You know what I'm saying? You'll definitely be out there on special teams running down. You'll definitely find an impact. We'll definitely find an impact and a position for you to impact the game and impact this program. And, you know, whatever you do with that is what you'll do. And the more you do, the more you're able to do, the more you'll be able to get. And he kind of kept, and I respect it. You know what I'm saying? That's one of the reasons why I, I gave, I said that, okay, Rutgers is definitely going to be, you know, because Coach Flood was with him that time, you know, on that um, recruiting visit when he came to prep my freshman year. And so I was, um, yeah, I was, I was, I was sold. You know what I'm saying? And so, but yeah, Coach Diano has been the same since I met him, uh, since I first met him uh, almost 10 years ago. You know what I'm saying? And so, I've always had great relations with him. Everybody who's talked to him, everybody who's talked about him has felt the same exact way. The tough guy who loves his players, who loves family guys, loves his family, he's a family guy. And he, he says what he means and he means what he say. And that's, I mean, I'm similar to that. We, we, we caught from the same cloth. So that, I mean, we definitely relate. So, I mean, I've, I've always, I've had nothing but high regard for him. Yeah. You, speaking of prep, you gonna send any of those guys to Rutgers anytime soon, or what? The prep guys? Yeah. What's going on, man? They're all going out of state. I don't. I I I, <laughs> I do what the OGs did for me, man. I don't influence decisions. I don't even try to give hints, man. Y'all boys do. They are free to do and and, and go where they feel they will be the all they can be. I, if they have any questions, they reach out to me. That's a totally different story. I let them, and I tell them the truth. They ask for my experience. I'll tell them the exact truth. I'll tell them where I feel like they will be best to do the best that they can. But I would love for them to come to go to uh, Rutgers. That would be awesome. They, the best players can, can go and, and go to Rutgers and ball and do some great things. Perhaps had a great part, uh, pipeline at uh, Rutgers. I think it just, we need to, to kind of get it going some more. But um, yeah, that'd be great. But no, nah, I don't. I, I try not to. I try not to uh, influence the decisions, man. I try to let them grow up and do do what they got to do and make their mistakes or whatever. All right, man.